Hi everyone, I'm Lisa and welcome to Lisa's Stamp Studio. I've got a great and quick holiday gift idea for you today, especially if you're a chocolate lover like me. This is what we're going to be creating. It's filled with Hershey's nuggets and I'm going to give you some tips along the way as well as an additional sample of what else you can do with this box. Remember, if you're here from YouTube, you can click on the link in the description bar below, which will take you over to my blog, and there you'll be able to find pictures and cutting dimensions for this project. While you're there, check on the online classes tab for several ways for you to stamp with me from home. Let's head over to the stamp table and let's get started on today's project. You can get a Good close up of this project now. Isn't that metallic foil just really beautiful for this project? Quite heavy, too, quite a bit of chocolate in here. Aside from the Hershey's nuggets that I've used, you can add anything to these boxes, including other chocolates or treats, cocoa packets, those all fit. I've got another sample to share with you at the end of the video, so make sure you stick with me. We're going to be using the acetate card boxes that are in the holiday catalog. You're going to be able to find these boxes on page 12 here. I'll tell you what, this is an amazing product. This product is guaranteed through January 2nd, and these acetate card boxes have an amazing weight to them. Love the clear plastic. They're really strong. They're already pre-scored, so all you have to do is put them together. The stamp set we're going to be using with today's project is featured here on page 12, and it's called Merry Little Labels. I actually purchased it in wood mount, and I've really enjoyed using this for all different types of tags. Not just for cards, of course, or gift packaging, but great for these acetate boxes as well. If you don't already have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator and you would like a complimentary copy of the holiday catalog or our annual catalog, just leave me a comment. I'll be happy to send you one. All I'm going to do now is just kind of give these a little bit of a bend. And I wanted to create some interest on the front of this box. So I decided to use the Winter Wonder Embossing Folder. I think you can see that large snowflake. Because of the flap, I found it best to slip the embossing cover in, very much like a slip cover. I have my Big Shot multi-purpose platform here, and I'm going to put a clear mat on the bottom to protect it. My embossing folder is still tucked inside that box. I'm going to lay that right here on top, and then another clear mat over the top. Now, you might not think that this is going to fit through, but it does. Crank slowly, and that's going to emboss that acetate. Remember the words Stampin' Up! and Sizzix are the front of the folder, so you want those facing up to make sure that the impression is actually raised versus embedded, unless, of course, you want it that way. So just keep that in mind as you place that embossing folder inside the box. All right, so there we go. I want to point out too that you want to make sure that the embossing folder is lined up along the edges as you crank it through because you don't want it to be crooked on top of the box. All right, the next step of course would be to fill it with the chocolate, but I want to give you a couple tips. I actually opted to leave mine unwrapped because the Hershey's Nuggets already have these beautiful metallic foil wrapped on the chocolates. So the other alternative I have for you is cutting a piece of designer series paper. It's going to be a lot easier to wrap these nuggets if we condition the paper. So I'm going to use my bone folder on the back side of the paper. I am going to roll it through the bone folder, very much like you would do when you were curling ribbon. So that's going to break down that fiber a little bit. Use of glue dots is going to make this so much easier. So I'm going to attach one here on the inside of one end and another on the opposite end. So I've got my two glue dots here. Starting on the back side, I'm going to place that designer paper in the center of the wrapper, and then I'm going to roll and crease it over the Hershey's Nugget as I connect the ends to the back. I found that those glue dots just held beautifully. And of course, then you can decorate these to go inside your box to coordinate. 
I want to make a focal point or a simple tag for this, and I chose to emboss mine, but I'm going to use the embossing buddy to prep my paper. There's an anti-static powder in this bag that will actually repel powder where there is not ink. It's just a, a great tool when you're heat embossing. I have my Versamark ink here, so I'm going to ink up the Eat, Drink, and Be Merry. I kind of thought that was appropriate for a treat little box. I'm going to stamp that right here on the cardstock. Lots of firm, even pressure to make sure I get that design out really well. I'm going to cap that because I don't want to get embossing powder in it. And lift. Now it's going to be difficult to see on camera especially because of course it's a clear ink and it's meant specifically to be heat embossed over. Working over a coffee filter which is going to allow me to catch all the excess powder. I'm sprinkling that generously over the top and then I'm tapping off the excess. I'm going to slide that out of the way and I'm going to bring in my heat tool. The Stampin' Up! Heat Tool has a 1 and a 2 here on the end, and the 2 is the high speed. Once the tool gets hot, it will actually retain its heat, so doing multiples of these is a lot faster. What you're looking for is to make sure that that powdery look changes to that beautiful metallic foil type finish, and you can see it changing here right as you're watching. It is a very, very hot tool, so you're going to want to make sure that you rotate the cardstock as it gets closer to your fingers. Isn't that pretty? That's going to lend a lot of credence to those um, metallic wrappers. I'm going to turn that off, set that aside. I chose to punch mine out with the two inch circle punch. So I'm going to go ahead and put that inside and I'm looking to center that greeting the best I can inside that circle. I find that stamping first, then punching, provides a much more effective result than trying to put those words on a little tiny circle. It needed something behind it, so I grabbed a piece of silver foil from the silver foil sheets, and I'm using that starburst punch. And I'm going to punch out one from the foil as well. And you're going to see that that provides just the perfect layer. I'm going to use my snail adhesive. I'm going to provide adhesive on the back of this to adhere these two layers together. And I'm looking for that border and then I'll flip it over and just rub from the back. All right, so now we have our tag. So just for the sake of the demonstration, we're going to assume that it's filled with whatever you want to put it in. So I'm going to go ahead and close up the tabs. And now we're going to add some ribbon. I've cut 20 inches of the silver metallic edge ribbon. This is absolutely gorgeous ribbon. It's a satin ribbon with a metallic edge and it is beautiful and it's double sided so you don't have to worry about tying it upside down. What I did is I actually placed the ribbon around the top of the box. And if you're worried about it slipping, you can go ahead and provide a glue dot in its place to help you hold it there. And I'm gonna make a tie. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up like I'm going to make a bow. I'm actually going to make what I call a pulled loop. I find that this loop actually is a little bit more masculine than presenting it as a bow. So I just want to teach you something different. Come around like you're going to make a bow. And then when you bring the other loop through, I want you to pull it all the way through. Normally you would stop here to make a bow, but this time I want you to pull it all the way through and then pull tightly. And that's going to give you that real pretty loop on one end. I'm going to grab my paper snips and I'm going to give my ends a little bit of a haircut so that they're not too long. And then we're going to attach the tag. Now there's lots of ways you can do this. Obviously a glue dot would work, but I wanted it to dangle. So I brought in the 1 16th handheld punch and I punched a hole. And I'm going to choose to punch mine today over here to the side. Make sure that if you want it at the very top that you kind of scoot this down a little bit to make room for it. So I'm going to have my tag hanging this way. I've got about 8 inches here of the white baker's twine and I'm going to run that through that hole and pull that through. And then this is going to get tied up underneath. So I'm going to slip this underneath here. And I'm going to bring these underneath these raw ends of my ribbon because I don't want it to show too much, but I definitely need something for it to hang from. And then I'm going to tie a knot. And when I go to tie this, I'm not going to tie it too tight because I want to make sure that it's going to hang. And I'll just tie another end here so that's secure without falling off. And I'm going to pull those tightly to make sure that's connected. And then with my scissors, I'll give this a little bit of a haircut. 
And then you can shimmy that so that your knot is towards the back and that your bow is up front. Isn't that pretty and so simple? All right, so here's the one that I made that's full. And remember, you can wrap those Hershey's nuggets if you'd like for a different presentation. But I promised you another idea, and here it is. This one I have actually filled with handmade cards that coordinate with the stamp set. This is called Snowflake Sentiments, and this was actually part of my November Studio Stamps in the Mail. Now, if you're not sure what Studio Stamps in the Mail is, it's a way for you to stamp with me from home. I provide you all the pre-cut supplies to make a total of eight cards. This one's a fancy fold, and a video and tutorial for you to stamp at home and then create them in your own time, but absolutely beautiful. This box will hold five cards and envelopes, and because I do have a fancy fold here, I did find that four fit a little bit more comfortably for me. So if you are a regular paper crafter, go ahead and tuck in some of those cards that you've handmade and create yourself a beautiful presentation. Designer Series paper is from the Year of Cheer Specialty Edition, beautiful metallics in here foil snowflakes, a little bit of that gold mini sequin trim, and then just a small greeting. So regardless of how you decide to fill these, I hope that this will give you some great ideas for quick holiday gifts this season. Thanks so much for joining me, everyone. I look forward to seeing you next time. Have a great day. 